Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking, and today we are in Pro Cycling Manager 2022 with the just hotfixed release version. And uh, as there have been already some uh, first impression videos out there, and some of a quality that I wouldn't be able to reach without significant effort being put in, uh, I recommend you watch the uh, video by Benji. I will link it in the description down below to get a first impressions and uh, look at all the features that are new to this version, which are mostly focused on the career mode. There are, however, some features in there that will affect other aspects of the game, namely all of them, and that is the stamina and resistance system revamp. What this video is going to do is to delve deep into the mechanic and get some proper testing of it done so that we can build up a better feeling for what it actually does, how it interacts with stats and what to expect in the game from it. Uh, we shall see if there's anything behind what the Steam page says. Let's quote. Stamina and resistance scores have a bigger effect on how effort is exerted during a race. This allows some riders to attack several times or manage their effort at the end of the race better. Well, end quote right there. So um, I would say that has always been true. Uh, has it not? Yeah. I've played the game enough to say that that has always been true. But let's see what is behind that and how this new system plays. And in order to do so, then I think the best way to approach it is to isolate the stats and see how just those stats have their dependencies aligned. For that, we are going into a one-off race and there is one stage that is particularly useful to test this. It is the Paris stage, Champs-Élysées. All right, um, that one is great because it is extremely flat and repeated. And that means we have the perfect test case here for different levels of exertion, as well as um, just enough room to, to pace two riders. So how do we best test the underlying stats that are um, resistance and stamina? Those are the two that are um, revamped. So I would say that we need a rider or two riders rather, that have very different stamina and resistance stats, but otherwise have the same main stat. And the only main stat that counts in this sector is flat. One way to get two riders with um, the same main stat, which in this case is just flat, but very different uh, stamina and resistance, is to choose a stana. And there are some riders in here that um, make things easy to test. We are running without any randomization. Very important. We want this to be a true test of what is actually going on. So fitness 100 and no race day condition changes. We're looking for two riders that have a stat of uh, whatever, but the same. And these two riders for this test will be Conti and Bassa. And they have, as you can see, 70 in flat, a very nice middle-ish number to use, and then very, very different stats for stamina and resistance. 72, 72 versus 63 and 62. And recovery, in case that also plays into anything, has about-ish the same difference. What would be perfect as a test would be for them to have the exact same recovery just to rule it out that this is actually mattering. But uh, that's probably very diff difficult to find a rider that has all those things aligned, or two riders rather. So the plan here is to let them fall behind the peloton and then, well, ride these laps and do various tests on my two little guinea pigs. And uh, they are going to tell us all about the stamina and resistance. For the very first test, we want to be as fresh as possible. So we're just going to ride slowly, leisurely to the first lap. And then our perfect test bed is starting. Perfect flatness. As you can see, we now have two riders separated by a little gap. And they are riding along nicely. There is no slipstream between these riders. They have spent the same amount of energy. Oh, well, Conti, a tiny, tiny fraction of less energy because he was riding at uh, an effort of 10 just 
ever so slightly longer. Right. All right, now let's proceed to the first test. Here comes the Valley of Paris. How quick is the Fresh Rider? Let's do and test that real quick. We need to stop that right there and that up oh, a little late, but um, that that's within a second. All right, here we go. So Conti is starting to reach his maximum speed. Let's see, 52. 52 it is. So we're going to set him back to 40. Let's remember where he is in terms of his energy and resistance and whatnot. Uh, we've used the tiniest bit right there. And very soon, we, uh, Basso is going to hit the same mark. And there he goes. Also 52. All right. So now let's compare. Um, the difference that you see here between the resistance bars and the red bar is, uh, well, ex exactly nothing. And that is something that you might not expect, but it does make sense. All right, hear me out. So, Conti and Basso have the exact same flat stat. That means they reach the same speed as we just confirmed, 52-52. I would like to see the decimal place as well, but it seems like this is accurate. They are completely fresh, and they just started um, basically one minute power effort. The flat stat is about how fast they are in the flat. Nothing else. All right? Yes, they have the same speed. So we've confirmed that. Now, one might think that, oh, if um, Conti has higher resistance and higher stamina, or rather the stamina, and, well, also the resistance. Resistance, red bar, and stamina is the yellow bar. Those are now supposedly linked. Okay. Um, you would maybe consider that, oh, well, Conti has higher resistance, so the bar should last longer. Hmm. It should deteriorate slower. Well, that is something that you could think, but if you think about the physiology of it, then riders that have a certain FTP, a certain speed in the flat, that is 70, then their FTP, which is 60 minutes of riding at their maximum possible effort in this time span, that should give you the same speed. And both riders should be able to keep that speed for 60 minutes, because that is the definition of their FTP. And FTP means functional threshold power. Uh, so um, that is basically you ride as hard as possible for an hour and then you drop dead off your bike. It is mentally extremely excruciating to hold that for 60 minutes. That is uh, not something that people usually are capable of doing. Um, but that is how things are measured and can be calculated from somewhat easier tests like 20 minute power and so on. So, all right, this, this kind of makes sense. Red bar, you could see as your maximum one-minute effort. So, same argument there. If they have the same flat stat, and uh, they, they should be riding at the same speed, if the red bar represents one-minute power, then the red bar should be one minute long and not be influ influenced in length by the resistance stat, right? Okay, so they should lose it at the same pace. The feeling would be the other way around, that if you have higher resistance, that you can keep um, on that effort for longer. Both ways of looking at it make sense, but if you boil it down to physiology, this system seems to be pretty accurate. So now let's have our two riders roll to the next test section. Let them recover a little bit first. Let's see um, how long it takes for them to recover. Does it take the exact same amount? Let's take a look. So Conti is full at the third from the, of, of the yellows there from the end. Uh, and let's see where Basso is full and full. Okay, yeah, same, exact same. Now, the same will be true for yellow, as you can see. They are also recuperating at the same rate. You should be probably looking at a uh, at a case where the yellow is more empty, so that we have a more accurate measurement of it. But I have done so, and indeed, 
they recover at the exact same rate. You can see it here. It's full pretty much right there. And uh, that's just one pixel missing. And here, exactly the same. All right, same recovery. That could be questioned. And so let's ask the question, should that be the case if someone has the higher stamina and higher resistance versus another rider? And maybe you could argue that, no, nah, probably there should be a little bit of an advantage to someone who has the higher resistance stat. Maybe recuperating it should be a little easier. All right, I think that is a fair point to make. We have the finish line coming up over there, and let's do our next test right there. It will be an 85 effort test, and just see uh, where we end up there. All right, and there, ah, that's right before the line, all right. Uh, 85, you go, and let's see how long um, he can, ah, let, let's, let's get him down there, until the end of this flat sector, basically, and then start to recover. So Conti goes, and stop it right there. Yep, that's the perfect spot. We want to keep it equal. Now, Basso goes as well. First, let's compare speeds. 47 and 47. Exactly the same speed as expected. One very interesting thing I'm just observing here is that Basso actually has a lower heart rate. I think that is a potentially a rounding issue. Maybe an issue with how it got approached. Let's um, give him a wee wee bit of rest there and now up it to 85 and see if he... No, he goes right back up. So that I don't think makes uh, any sense here. And now we're going to stop it right back where our lap started, which was there. All right, now let's take a look at recovery from there. So we're going to set it to 40 again. And do the same thing for Basso. To speed up recovery even more, I'm setting them to 20 effort. And we shall see if there's still no difference in recovery. Uh, keep in mind that Conti had a little bit of a harder time because his red bar was drained slightly more. So we would expect, for whatever reason that was, um, so we would expect Basso to return to full just ever so slightly earlier, and he did. And it was basically a second or two earlier, so uh, that, that's fine. Now, next test. We want to get these riders as low as possible on the green. Let's do that. Now there's just one last lap, and we see that we are pretty much empty, but uh, approaching the two-thirds mark. This mark is quite important, as you're going to see. Let's see what happens. Yeah, look how similar this is. They are exactly the same in drainage of resources. And here we go. Blop. Yep. All right. So what have we learned so far? It doesn't matter whatsoever what stats you have in terms of stamina and resistance. You are going to have the exact same speed and you're going to have the exact same stamina and resistance, in air quotes, for two otherwise equal riders. So have we seen any difference so far? Well, um, no, not, not, not really, have we? No, no difference between those stats. All right, but now we're coming to the point where the stats actually do show some uh, divergence. Let's grab some bottles first so that we don't get dehydrated. Then recuperate some energy. And we did see a little effect there already. Yeah, you can see the yellow bar is slightly shorter there than for Basso. Um, all right, so there we have that. Now yellow is recovering. And a big congratulations to Demar for uh, winning on the Champs-Élysées. And uh, now for our test. Now that we have gotten a little low in, uh, on the uh, stamina here. I wonder, do we still have the same speed for the same effort? Let's try it out. There is another crossing coming up and we are going to set it right there. Let's do a 99 effort. And d keep in mind, these, these guys are over 10 stats separated, right? So Conti first, 
And Basso second. There we go. And we're going to sprint to this one. Let's see how it goes. Uh, we have a speed of 53. Do you remember that number? Uh, I don't, because it was 52 before, right? So uh, that, that is because there's a slightly different wind in this section than it was before. But what does it mean? Well, I can tell you. It means that there is no difference in speed between uh, being fresh and not being fresh anymore. And here you see 53 as well, same speed. Well, he is slower now because he's now resting. And there we're going to shut him down as well. All right. Now, what we're going to do is write out the rest of the stage at 75 each. But um, let's do it the proper way this time. From this crossing onwards, we're going to set it to 75 and then see what happens. Now, actually, we can go with 85. That will be just as good. So here we go. 85, 85. Now, let's see what happens. Do you see how the yellow and the red bar start decreasing? Also, they have started their decrease at the exact same break point in green. Also very important to note. So there is no difference in terms of stats for when the bars start to deteriorate in length. Where we do see a difference here is that this, the bars deteriorate at different rates. There's the finish coming up and we can compare the bars and uh, I don't know why it's chugging like this. It's probably recording or something. And there we see Conti is done. Basso shortly thereafter. And you see that there is about a sh one and a half times, I would estimate, the um, diminishing of the yellow and red bar for Basso, which is an effect of the lower stamina and resistance stat. All right, across the line we go. So what have we learned? Well, there is very, very little difference in the stats, or actually zero difference in the stats, as long as you are above the threshold for when it starts to deteriorate the bars, that is the yellow and the red bar. Oh, and also it seems to be the effect that one gets disqualified while the other one is still fine. Very unfortunate. No, but the true point here is that as long as you remain above about two thirds of your green bar, there is no difference between the stats, stamina and resistance. None at all. It is all on the primary attributes at that point. And before I comment further on what I think should be happening, uh, let's try a stage with our same two riders where they do have very different primary stats. And what better stage to take than a um, proper hard mountain stage, but preferably one that is a little longer. Well, what what better test than the Motorola? <laughs> oh, that is that is nasty. Let's select only this stage and get those two riding. There's not that much flat in between, so uh, should be a good test. Whoa, wonky. Oh, okay, okay, oh, yeah, that camera stuff. So we have arrived, and we're going to fry the leg legs of our two riders, Conti has a way higher mountain stat than, uh, where, where's Basso? Right at the top, yes. Um, it's a stark difference. I don't think it will take longer than to the first climb until our two riders have fallen out of the peloton. Let's see if we can separate them um, further. Uh, they're still hanging in there. Very soon, they won't be. There we go. Perfect separation right there. What we now will see is that in, in this little climb already, they will separate due to stats. If you are riding at a lower pace than um, 85, only the mountain stat counts for these inclines. As we do want to tire out our riders, let's ride at uh, a pace of 60, which is the only pace they can sustain for longer periods of time. And also, that means that Conti is going to ride away from Basso on this incline. Now, we're just going to set them to 60 and let them ride. See what happens. 
In theory, what should happen is that they progress at different speeds, but they lose the exact same amount of energy. And that is what we can... Oh, no, don't write backwards. That is what we can see right here. Already a one-minute gap um, to Basso, just because of the higher stats. And in the snow, we are reaching the top. Let's check your stamina rating right there. It is uh, there. Okay, how do we compare this? Well, um, let's put it down there. You see, I have, I've boxed this. So let's see how much more Basso... You, you see they have lost exactly the same amount, but Basso has another six minutes to ride to get there. And there you go. You see that Basso, due to his lack of stats, has lost more stamina. None of that has anything to do with stamina or resistance, though. This is purely down to the main stats. At the stop sign, oh, uh, stop! It didn't. It didn't stop. At the stop sign, we are now going to set it such that uh, we are basically wasting them. Let's see what happens. As the stop sign, you are also allowed to overshoot a little bit, and uh, here we go. Fair test. Yeah, I think so. Let's go. And right before the mountain rating starts, we see that we have some deterioration in the bars starting right now. And that is, again, at the same kind of spot, right before the the bottle. A little bit. About a mouse pointer of, of width um, between the bottle and the, the bar position. There. there, That is where your bars start to deteriorate, regardless of stamina or resistance stat. Now, let's see what happens in the following climb. I shall meet you on top of Mortirolo. I, I take the lift. And here we go. Conti is almost at the top. I just kept it at 75, uh, despite them being all empty. And that will continue to drain them in terms of yellow and red. I think only if you're below 140, or significantly below that, you will not see any drainage there. So uh, that's something else we should test, actually. All right, um, let's see. That, that is something that we can test right afterwards. So what we're going to do here now is wait for the line, then box and compare. So here we have that. Um, they have run the exact same effort. This is... yellow is right there. Okay. And you can see there's already a massive difference to Basso. Let me select Basso and rebox so that we have a direct comparison. And Basso isn't even on top yet. So um, now let's um, recuperate and see if this falls further, despite us going really slowly. Poor Basso has arrived at the top. We are pausing right there, and you can see where my box marker is and where the yellow bar is of both Conti and Basso. Conti hasn't lost more yellow bar. We are riding at a very low effort. So those bars only diminish when you are doing efforts that are beyond 60 dot effort. Also what we can see is that Basso has lost a whole lot more of those bars. This is a um, this is due to two things. This is both that he has lower resistance and stamina for the respective bar, but also that he has worse main stats. So it took him longer at the same effort in order to get to the same place. Also again, pointing out, Conti hasn't lost any more bar. He has recuperated his bars, and uh, that recuperation time is an interesting factor. At least for the yellow bar, what it seems to be doing is that the overall time to get from minimum to maximum remains constant. So if your bar shrinks to, let's say, half, it will still take the full amount of time to get to half bar. Let us test if that is actually true. So in order to do so, we need to ride very hard with Conti and Basso, have them... Uh, basically drain all their resources, and then we let them recover. One thing that we can rule out as a kind of source of this effect, if there is any, is that we are at different levels of green bar. 
which we are not because we have ridden the same effort all along. All right, let's uh, speed up a little bit. And oh, Basso isn't even in the in the proper area yet. There you go. There it's a little flatter. All right. I think we are roughly in the same state here now. 48, 50, 150 and 148. And now let's start the recuperation. So here we go. Both are at zero. Let's see if my hypothesis there of um, the yellow bar not filling independent of its length uh, being correct or not. So let's let's see how this goes. They are both at the same green bar, uh, very, uh, almost, almost perfectly. So, hmm. The first thing we, what? Oh, okay. Hard climbs keep you from recuperating, even though you ride twenty. Well, that is um, that is probably correct. <laughs> <laughs> you can't ride at an 11% slope at a low pace. That is just not something that gravity allows you. So what we are going to do is postpone this test till the downhill. We are going to get them to the exact same location so they have the same terrain and then test the same thing again. All right, Conti is at the line. Perfect. Now, we're going to set it to 20 and let him ride. And I'm going to take the time for how long it takes for him to recover fully. And we're at the bottom of the slope here. I think that is a um, pretty good time. It's 1 minute and 10 seconds. And Basso isn't fully there yet. Uh, while Conti has recovered uh, yeah, almost, almost double of what Basso has left at the moment. Okay, now the question becomes... Oh, stop, stop you right there. Can Basso fully recover this little bit of, of yellow bar in the same time? Or is he also going to be left at about-ish halfway? I don't even think I need to see the rest. There, there we have the, the same time coming up. And that's 1 minute 6, 7, 8, 9... Basically 110. And we have basically recovered half of our bar. A little bit less. Just like Conti. Thing being, Basso's bar is way, way shorter. His peen probably as well. Alright. I, I think that was a, um, a very good test. Um, let's see. On this um, final little false flat uphill section. If we can get there with both riders if uh, we still have the same speed as before. And unfortunately that will be impossible to test because Basso doesn't have any <laughs> resources left. <laughs> He's empty. But it doesn't matter, we don't have to compare the riders. We just need to look at very, very empty Conti. Um, but then again, we don't have a perfect comparison here because this is a false flat and not a flat. We know the speeds he can reach in the uh, perfect flat. All right, let's go 99. Let's see see your sprint. This is getting... Yeah, okay, you can see that. This is at 1%. At 1% slope, at 99, is reaching 49 kilometers an hour. That It is highly likely that this would result in 53 kilometers an hour at 0%. So um, what we have seen here is that again green bar even even when it's down there if you have just anything left doesn't matter always the same speed for your rider and that would be exactly the same with basso if we had any kind of resources left i don't think this is, no no red bar just disappears instantaneously yeah that's tough luck um it did seem, though, as if the red bar just instantly disappeared. So that's an interesting observation. What exactly to make of it, I don't know. But now, let us summarize, and then I shall give you my opinions on this new mechanic. What we have learned is that neither the stamina nor the resistance stat matter whatsoever until you hit your, like, two-thirds-ish um, energy left threshold that is the green bar. Once you hit that threshold, 
and you continue to do efforts, which is more than 60 effort on the dot effort scale, then your bars, the red one and the yellow one, will start to deteriorate. The pace at which they deteriorate is given by the respective stat, resistance for red and stamina for yellow. That, by the way, is just a guess, but I think it is a solid one. We haven't tested specifically which stat influences which bar, but that is what makes most sense and we can, well, we can assume that it's correct. Resistance and stamina have no effect on overall speed. Neither has energy as a whole. We have seen that, that regardless of what green energy bar level you are at, as long as you have yellow and red bar, you will hit the exact same speeds as if you are fresh. In the grander context of this mechanic, what we can... Um, now say is that in easy stages where no real efforts are required at the start or well it doesn't matter what efforts are required if your energy bar your uh, green bar stays above this threshold as long as that is the case only your primary stats matter when you are in harder stages where or the race is made harder by a higher tempo then the main stat will dictate how high a pace you need to ride to keep up and that in turn will influence how quickly your green bar deteriorates. Let me really quickly illustrate that. Setting the riders to the same amount of effort maximum hold position, we shall see where their energy levels are at after a little while into the stage. This is exactly as long as Basso lasted and what you can see compared to Conti with the higher stats, especially Mountain, he has lost a significantly uh, larger portion of his green bar. The recovery of the yellow bar is tied to how long the yellow bar is. The shorter it is, the slower your recovery will go. If that also is true for the red bar, we could not quite establish. Alright, now. Yeah, you've probably, if you've come this far, you probably also want to hear what um, I think about this new mechanic or this revamp of the mechanic. And uh, I'm speaking to this mechanic as also, as you probably also aware of, a professional games designer, uh, having made a cycling game too, The Cyclist Tactics. You really should check it out. Anyway, what um, I think about this new mechanic is the following. It works well for its simplicity it is a very simple system simplicity is not a bad thing usually it's actually a pretty good thing and even though i've designed automation which is like the exact inverse of uh, simple uh, i can attest to that yes a simple solution will most often be better than a complex one because it's easier to control it's easier to tweak and it's easier to get right within the framework you are allowed to work in to keep it simple. Some things though can be made a little bit too simple. So problems I have with this system. There is absolutely zero difference between the speed of riders if they are fresh or completely exhausted. Absolutely no difference. That shouldn't really be the case. Also, I would um, suggest that it would make a little bit more sense if uh, riders who have a very high resistance stat or stamina stat, that they recover their respective bar a little bit quicker than riders who have a lower stat. Where the system also falls flat on its nose, as uh, I would opine, is when you have no effect of resistance and stamina whatsoever unless you hit this magical arbitrary threshold that is roughly two-thirds of your green bar. My simple design question to ask for this situation would be, why not have a very small effect up to this point? Maybe this effect could be on a curve, so that it's very, very minor to start with, and then becomes more severe as you drop down the green bar level. My biggest worry, though, is that th 
Because it doesn't affect speed whatsoever, none of this does, what you could end up with is the following situation. You have riders of the same stats, the same main stats, let's say flat, it's after a mountain stage, everyone is, oh no, not everyone is exhausted. Let's say the climber is, ex is not exhausted, but um, the flat riders who are in the same group are somehow, because the climber came from the peloton, still fresh, the um, more flattish riders who are uh, damn exhausted have been in a breakaway all day long and now it comes down to the final one or two kilometers of flat terrain. Who is going to win? The fresh rider from the peloton or the flat riders? The answer is the flat riders. Because while they're exhausted, no one wanted to work for the climber on the last descent they have recovered a little bit of their yellow and red bars and that means they can power through and easily take the victory. While in reality that is quite unlikely to happen if they are actually really exhausted. That of course is just one example. You can, uh, you can surely think of many more. And I think this mechanic overall is a nice simple system which has a lot of holes that could be filled in a within the framework of the system in a much more elegant way. You could sound off in the comments down below if you want me to uh, to show you how I would design those systems. And uh, yes, I think that is all for this video. A very deep dive into stamina and resistance in Pro Cycling Manager 2022. Don't forget to check out The Cyclist Tactics, that is my game, and I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time.